That's called a setup. <laughs> You're all going to report to the parade after this. <laughs> executive team. <laughs> wow. Let me just ask the exec team. I mean, the people who are meant to come up, uh, they know themselves, so they just come up. Wow. Yeah. Come on, let's appreciate our team, these amazing pastors. Wow. Amen. Wow. Like I, like, I didn't know I was coming up, so I don't even know what I'm supposed to be saying. I haven't even looked at my notes. But this is what happens when you have an army that ambushes the general. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. All right. Um, well, we wanted to just have a bit of a conversation. And um, to make it, this is home. This is a home conversation. And I think for those of you who are watching online, uh, we want you to feel at home as well as we have this conversation. Uh, it's more of a, we want to speak from the heart. And even the pastors who are down, uh, including Pastor Carol, will have an opportunity to share as they led. But also, we're going to open up to the floor as well and just hear what this journey is like for you. Some of you are like me. You're caught by surprise. You're the DG leader, and now you're supposed to be marching with your people. And you're like, all the time you're marching, you're in disbelief. Like, what am I doing here? Like anybody found themselves in that place. Pastor Godwin is like, you're the DG leader. And now you're supposed to be leading and you have no clue what you're doing. Uh, so it will be fun to just hear some of your comments and some of your experiences as we've gone through this journey. Because we're learning. Amen. Amen. It's, it's amazing because we're learning together. So I think one of the things I wanted to share is we began a journey full of conviction. Uh, let me just say I was full of conviction. These guys weren't. Uh, because they had no clue what I was rambling on and on about. But I just kept feeling the way we were constituted, there was a problem. I didn't have the words then. I think now I'm able to explain. Actually, right now, we're even coaching several churches and helping them understand the journey because they've also reached the same conclusion we reached, that church, traditional church constituted cannot change the world. Uh, it, can, it can raise individual Christians, but it cannot raise an army of a movement that changes the world. And so several of those pastors have said, we've heard what's happening at Mavuno. We'd love to learn. And so we're actually in the process where we're walking with them. But at that time, I had no clue. And so I just came to these guys and said, we have to be a family. And um, I think that was Pastor Sheila's first day on the exec team. And she was bewildered at what these guys are talking about. Um, but we began a journey. Pastor Milton, I think you were in that room at the time. Um, we began this journey. And it was quite, it's been quite an intense journey. So I'm going to just be getting them to share, just honestly, some of the, their own responses. And because for each of them, a time came when they were confronted with this issue of, am I in or am I not? This whole parent issue, becoming a family, having a spiritual father, what is that? We've never, you've been our boss and a good boss at that. We don't have complaints with you as a boss. But now this is a whole new level and we're not sure about it. So I'd, lo I'd love to just, first of all, let's start there. Because I guess people are sharing some of the challenges of following. But we can start with the challenges, first of all, of even family for us. Uh, what are the things you guys struggled with? What are, what are your first impressions? What are the things that made you really? And when did you finally come to the place where you're like, ah, I'm going to do this? Maybe I'll start with Pastor Faith, because I know it didn't happen automatically. Uh, this amazing woman of God. Come on, Pastor Faith. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, just like Pastor Kilonzi said yesterday, we, we used to see you, well, the day before, we used to see you guys as bosses. Yeah. So I was like, like, why is this dynamic changing? I love that it's boss, so you know there's a line there. Like, don't come to my side, and I will tread carefully on your side. Yeah. So that was hard, moving from seeing you as uh, you guys as that. In fact, he said, you, our boss's boss. Moving it from there to now seeing you as a father, that was quite a, a journey. Yeah. yeah. Now I want you to just keep it real, like, yes. about that struggle. Like. <laughs> You're safe, you're safe, so, you're safe. <laughs> you're safe here. So my, my husband uh, followed faster than I did. I had a lot of questions. I am, I am the people who think a lot, like process a lot. You know, this thing has to make sense for me. So he, he followed fast. And I was the one who was always behind questioning. You know, an instruction would come, down, uh, come from Pastor M and I'd be like, but why? 
you know, this doesn't make sense. Like, have you considered this other side? And it took, it took a while. In fact, I can say maybe mid last year is when I actually started following. Because yeah. I had a lot of questions. I was, I, you know, when you, for example, when you said about um, having one father but many, I was like, the body of Christ has many places where we can feed from. You know, YouTube. Uh, you know, I listen to a little bit of Mavuno, then, you know, I go to Joshua Selman, then I go to, you know, all the other preachers. So it took me a while to, to actually accept the instructions and to say, okay, I'm shutting my mind down. Like, well, I, I'll stop thinking too much and just follow the instructions. What, what, when was the moment that that happened for you? Can you remember? I think for me, it was when... Okay, so because I also had a problem following, <laughs> first time, I also had a problem following my own husband. <laughs> yeah, because again, so we work together. So imagine first time gives an instruction, then it comes to the campus as uh, instructions from, you know, the father. And then me, I'm there, I'm also a staff member, so I'm like, you know, I have my own opinion in that conversation. And I had that war, you know, God telling me, I have to follow both of them. And as much as we are married, I had to realize the person who is responsible for this campus is not me. It's Pastor Kilonzi. So for me, it actually took me following my husband to actually be able to follow you. Because wow. God had to convict me. I have to follow him. He's the head. He's the one who's been put. The heaven did not consult me. We come here together and we are a couple. But at, at the end of the day, he's the one who is responsible for the campus. At the end of the day, he's the one who will give an account. And so it took me uh, dealing with it at a marriage level to be able to actually deal, it with, deal with it at the uh, wow. work level. Wow. Yeah. That's so profound because I really do sense all, all these levels of leadership, they connect with each other. Yeah. And usually your sign of struggle in one is a symptom of struggle in the others. Yeah. And so, uh, and it's interesting, I love to hear, Pastor Carol is going to share her experience because I think it's very common. I think that's a very common experience that she struggled as well. And I'd love to hear her story as we go along. But um, yeah, uh, Pastor Sheila, what, 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 what was your, your struggle with this? Yeah, uh, my struggle has been the longest. Um, I'm a control freak, so I like uh, being in control. And uh, I had come from a wounded place. So I had many wounds from my father. So I was very suspicious. Yeah. Then um, I had come from a, a, a certain church that I had followed hard, because I didn't have a problem following, but I had followed hard and we had been wounded. So by the time I left that church, I had already come and I had uh, walls. I had put walls around me. So I was like, nobody's going to tell me that nonsense of do this, do that. I'll just come do church and go. So when you called me to that space, I was like, so what's going on? And then now it comes to a time you're talking about following. I was okay with you being my boss. Being a boss was so easy. I will just say, yes, sir, I'll do it. And then I do it, I get paid, and I go. And then I know when it's time, it doesn't work. Contract, uh, the contract gets finished, I go home. So when you called us into a place of uh, now being family, it was a real struggle. Yeah. And uh, I have to say, I have also struggled following my husband because being the control freak I am, it's very hard. Even just uh, getting to that place of where I can come from the office, you know what I mean, ladies. Now you have to change your heart and become the wife. You are just from being the boss. So how do you come and change the, the heart at the gate and now become the wife? Now you are here uh, being very humble and following. <laughs> so it was very, very hard. And just to say the truth, now uh, every time I was, it, it made me very insecure. I don't know what happened because everything you'd say, everything you do, I'd just be like, there, I'm going to be judged. There, I'm not doing well. I need to get out. And can I share the story that of yes. what happened just recently? See, so see, we are being real. Yes, we are being yeah, real, yeah, right? Get it out. <laughs> so just up to very recently, there's a, a space I got to a very dark space. And now I was, I didn't even know I was in a depression kind of space. And I was questioning myself. Every time Pastor M would be called, I'm like, hey, now, what, what have I done wrong this time? So I never got into that space of him being my father. I kept seeing him as a boss. So it got to that space, I was like, I can't keep doing this anymore. I remember texting Pastor M, he had given me some assignment to do. So I was like, uh, dude, me, I've given myself two weeks, imagine. 
giving Pastor M. <laughs> so I wrote a text. I've given myself two weeks break. Um, this work, we have done it. This, 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 this. So I'll send someone to come and check you. What? Hey, Pastor M just called me and said, no, you come and talk to me head, uh, one on one directly, you know, and thank God for the wisdom of my husband. <laughs> <laughs> my husband told me, Pastor M calls, you better go. So I woke up, I went, um, and we had a very nice discussion, a very candid discussion where, you know, those like what Pastor Nyamu said, so many things I had, he, he would say something and I would hear something else. Something would go wrong, I would just see him, uh, looks, I, I'm like, there, I've done it again. I had so many times I told Pastor Carol, I've disappointed you guys again. I just felt that I was not fit. Uh, I'm not fit for the, for the team. So when we had that conversation with Pastor M, and I like that after now we, we sat down and he was like, eh -huh, so tell me, what's up? So there I was, I put my heart out. I told him, you, this happened, you did this. He was like, I, but that's not, it's not even what happened. So I realized that the devil had told me so many things and I'd put myself in a corner saying, I don't deserve to be here. Let me tell you guys, that conversation ended so well. And I remember that is the time. And it was just the other day. I think it was October yeah. last year, guys. Yeah. So I remember I just told him, you're my father. You are my father. And the minute I say that, a big weight uh, came off my shoulders. I was able now to see him as a dad. And believe me, even the counseling sessions I was going to, I didn't need to go to them anymore. Yani, it was done. It was a done deal. So it was, it was quite something. It was. First time, Yani. <laughs> yeah, it was We've quite come quite from far. I mean, I, th I think I'm, I'm, I'm just letting you into this so that you can see even your pastor's struggle. When you feel like you're struggling and you're having a challenge, it's not, it's, not, it's not just you. I think we're all smart people on this team, and everybody's had their journey. And I think what was interesting for you, Pastor Sheila, is because of the filter of what you're saying with your dad, yeah. with your background, yeah. you are filtering everything I say to you through that filter. Yeah. And yet I wasn't saying the things you were thinking I was saying. Imagine. And so it was a great conversation. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually, you, the filters you have right now, your, your relationship with your dad, your relationship with your past can actually cause you to, can cut you off from the new thing that God is doing. And so I think it's just a, an interesting thing to... Yeah, so I have to, to say then I got to that space. Uh, it was a self-sabotage. So I kept sabotaging myself. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you'll allow me to say this, I sense that both your marriages are much happier than they were. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm sensing. I'm, I'm just... From the smiles I see on your husband's faces, <laughs> this... <laughs> I'm sensing that something yeah. has shifted there as well. Yeah, Albu can even attest to that. Something shifted when I came back from that meeting. He could just tell that the meeting went well. He could just tell that, you know, he knew. He, he was telling me, I kept doubting myself. Because I would come, I'm like, you, did you see what happened? Did you see what happened? He was like, I don't even think that's the case. So he was so glad that I came to see you. Because when I came back home, the pressure was off. The tension was off, and now I started even, I think I've apologized to him how many times now? And I'm still, I have so many apologies still and, to and make. And he's in shock when you're He's in shock, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All our relationships are interconnected. Yeah. You know, what's happening at home, what's happening in church, what's happening at work, a lot of this stuff is actually interconnected. Now, let's hear from some of the guys. Uh, Pastor Mills, we've been together probably the <laughs> longest, and, but that did make it easy. It didn't make it easier for you. Wondering whether whether I, I need to share. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <sighs> um, for me it was a journey. Cause um, is this my con? Yeah. You can you hear can. me? Oh great. Um, for me it was a crazy journey. Cause um, I think I've known you since 2003. Yeah. Um, I came to the Lord because of your ministry. Um, you are the one who invited me to do internship in 2004. Um, you invited me back as a pastor in Mavuno in 2010. Uh, so all those two fathers uh, we were talking about from, I think, number four, <laughs> you happened to be ticking the box for all the above. Um, and um, in many ways, you'd been both a mentor and a boss. But 
I think for me, the boss part was not as strong as, as the mentor part. Mm. Um, so I always knew I'm being faithful to a man I love. I'm being faithful to the mission God has given him. Actually, it became like um, my work to sense your heart and pursue your heart, such that whenever you suggested anything, I would probably be one of the first ones to take off and execute. Yes, sometimes uh, even before you say we can do it. So that's the place I'd been. Now, <laughs> I went on sabbatical when we were making the shift uh, to family. And when I came back, uh, the bus had left the station and relationships had changed. So I'm coming back from sabbatical. Uh, I'm still Mills, the employed guy. Uh, there's some staff that has gone there uh, on that probably had affected me very badly. Um, and I now had trust issues with Pastor M. Trust not because he'd done something bad, but trust because I expected him to do something when something had happened within the family and dad didn't protect me. In fact, let me tell you, may I understand Absalom? <laughs> how he felt because of David. As in David did nothing because of how Tamar had been left uh, raped by Anon. I think that's what I felt. I felt like, Percy, you should have protected me. Percy, you know me better. Whatever is being said, you know me better. Yeah. And it felt like you didn't know me. And when the trust currency was taken away, I was like the most deflated person ever because... Uh, in many ways, you'd stood uh, by me uh, more than a boss would have. So uh, I really got lost. I got lost because now I didn't know how to posture myself. I didn't know how to position myself as a son. I can hear you clearly, as in my mind is crystal about what is being said. My mind is crystal about where we are going and the possibilities but my heart is not there. Yeah. Because my heart is feeling, man, as a father, you resolve conflict within your children. And now it seems like even the child who's wounded me, you're now very close with this child. I'm like, no, as in this is so wrong. Yeah. Uh, 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 and then at the end of the day, uh, there is still work to be done. There is the faithfulness I need to be in the calling of God over my life and over your ministry. So it was a very conflicting space. But one of the things I know happened to me and to Mashariki in the long run, because I moved very slowly, because I was very reluctant to engage, the ministry became misaligned. I don't know how to put it, as in... Not that they were doing anything wrong, mm. but they remained where everybody else was not. So the ministry ended up playing, now we are playing catch up, mm. because now I'm healed. So we are playing catch up. Uh, they, they, they probably now are understanding why they are on steroids, uh, be, because their pastor is healed. Um, but the ministry just remained somewhere packed. Um, I think I resigned several times, and you kept telling me, you don't quit family. <laughs> we are doing this forever. Um, and uh, I think the thing that gave me the biggest turnaround was, um, I think it was the day before Fearless. You did a presentation to us as campus pastors, uh, I think at at Teens Connect, mm -hmm. and you gave us some 10 or so things that uh, would make us not gain in the new thing that God is doing, not benefit in the new thing that God is doing. And you asked us to go and pray, but I came to you to tell you that um, I don't feel I need to pray, I need to repent to you of where my heart had been mm. because of the things that uh, you had given us that would sabotage uh, our commitment uh, to what God was doing 
Well, I, 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 was, I was probably ticking almost every box of everything you had shared. And then it was so profound. After we talked and, and hugged and cried, uh, I went to sit, um, to stand near my seat. And then Pastor Trevor uh, comes and tells me, I sense the Lord is telling me to pray with you because your biggest challenge with our father, Pastor M, for you is number five. And that number five had been my biggest thing. Wow. And he prayed with me and for me. And I just felt a weight just lift off. And that is when now I started the process of looking for ways to, to get myself back. Mm. Um, and I think today, because of something that happened uh, in this sanctuary, I know I am fully, fully, fully healed. Wow. Uh, something miraculous just happened in this sanctuary early in the morning. Um, I think Kev the Rev was a witness to it. Um, and I feel... And you're not going to tell us what it is. I feel good. Um, I think it was just the place of being able to hug the person I felt had really caused my wounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Guys, we didn't rehearse this conversation, so even I'm learning with you this stuff. And these are the kind of conversations we have as well. Uh, we keep it real, and we just share. And where we hurt each other, we make up, and we keep going. Oh, and the other thing I would mention is, you are coming to Shags was a confidence booster for me. Because if you didn't come with the exec team we visited, Shags, We visited your house, yeah, your, your home up country. They came to our rural home uh, to visit us, to visit mom. Uh, Mom feels like the most special woman on earth. The Pope came home. Uh, um, I think your coming there for me was a statement, uh, which now is something that happened after Fearless, that you could close the entire exec office, meaning entire campus network leaders, closed shop, to come for one week to be with us in Shags, as in... Uh, that was like, you shouted with that statement. If you had not come, by the way, <laughs> me, I wasn't going to come back. <laughs> you know the good thing when you are away on sabbatical, you can stay away. <laughs> 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 uh, you're laughing at my laugh. Or <laughs> <laughs> They're feeling you. <laughs> yeah. Feeling you. Uh, um, yeah, I can replace Ghost Mule. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think just coming to Shags was a statement, per se, um, because it told me this is how much invested you are, not in my work, mm. but in our relationship. Yeah. And that you could bring my brothers and sisters to our rural home, not even knowing how it looks like, not even knowing Kamani Nyumbaya Matope, as in whether it's a madhouse, as in, you did not care. You brought an entire team to my shags. Yeah. Well, thanks, Pastor Milton. Yeah. Love you. Yeah. I love sana. you more. Sana, 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 man. You're a good man. You're a good man. You're a good man. You can wow. tell. <laughs> yeah. You are jealous. <laughs> wow. Now, I mean, it's, it's, I mean I'm, I'm opening up this conversation just so that you see. Family is messy. When we say we're being family, it's not a theoretical thing. It, it is messy because we hurt each other and we have to make up. Because we're human, it means that when we start rubbing against each other, we're going to hurt each other. But what we've decided as a family is we're not going to run away from that. We're going to lean into that. Uh, because every time we do that, our relationships get stronger. Uh, when there's pain, it means that there's an opportunity for us to lean towards one another and to heal. And every time we've done that, we've actually ended up uh, stronger. Um, it's interesting, uh, Pastor James, I mean, you're the other guy I've known for a long, long time. And uh, it wasn't automatic. 
actually um as I've, as, I've, as I've thought about it and as I've reflected I've actually realized that uh it it wasn't hard for me yeah uh so the 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 interesting thing is I think somehow internally I had a I had a conviction that when you're a spiritual leader over people that that translates into a spiritual parent we didn't have the language then so i think all i have connected with now is that language yeah uh you know i grew up in a mainstream church uh you know then got into the nairobi chapel family before ending up here at mavuno and so I, i'd never called anyone my spiritual father but i realized like you know f- when i'd come here at hill city and i'd be praying for the people in this campus or serving then under pastor njoro I realized that sometimes I'd be praying and when I'd pray for our community I'd find myself praying and telling God I'm praying for the children that you have given Pastor Njoro and me to lead. And sometimes that that prayer would catch me off guard and I'd be like but I know how many people in this congregation are older than me. Uh where is that prayer coming from? So I think internally there was a certain understanding that actually when you when you occupy a certain position you're a parent not it's not about and by the way it's not even about merit it's not about age it's not about anything it's about where has god allowed you to be so when we started the conversations it was awkward just because we didn't have the language uh, just because you know uh, um you know we are, many people ask these questions many people other people not the ones who are here and they said are we now going to start calling pastor m papa and even for me that was weird because uh, just because i've not done it before but i didn't struggle with it in principle uh, but i i have had some people close to me who have struggled with it and we've had to grapple with the messiness like you're saying and so i sought i sought permission to share uh, just from a couple of people uh, one of those people is my wife and you know you've known her probably as long as you've known me we met yeah. uh, in mavuno at the internship that pastor kilonzi said everyone should do i'm just putting it out there um <laughs> i know as you watch and pray and seek the lord and so you you've known her for a long time as well now it's very clear to me that you're her spiritual father even before the language uh but my my but pastor docas lost her dad uh you know uh, young and uh, you know he was killed so it was a sudden death so there was no you know there's no long illness there's no pre- preparation or anticipation it's he's gone yeah. just like that and so and and then they'd had a difficult relationship actually a big part of the problem was they didn't have the relationship and their interactions were not kind and loving you know for them for the most part and so for her it's just been a struggle to to enter into that space of being a daughter much as i can see clearly that it's open and and she's been real about that now part of what family means is she's had that conversation with pastor m she's had that conversation with pastor caro so they know and and they know her background they know that we are committed they see her serving you guys see her serving but she's able to say this thing hasn't entered yet it it it's there's still a battle a battle going on uh the second person is um a daughter of this house a daughter of pastor Jackie Cardo uh the whole clan i think is here almost <laughs> all of them and in in 2021 uh you know mr cardo passed on and at that point uh pastor bato was serving on our team and you know and we stood with them and we prayed with them and we walked with them as a family and when we first had the conversation i think the first time that conversation was initiated was in august of 2021 this was a few months after uh, mr cardo had passed on and i could see the panic in her eyes at and 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 eventually i could see there was a struggle there and eventually when she was able to share with me uh, she said to me i can't call someone else dad and and it was just like my like my dad just passed on i you know it, and, and 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 she was open she said uh, you know it feels like a betrayal it feels like like no one can fill that gap and and i mean he was a phenomenal guy he was a phenomenal dad like any when when they share their stories about him and how you know he he would text them and call them and tell them i love you i'm like but this guy was ahead of his time uh, because many of us were not told those things you know <laughs> and so she just 
you know, so she's just struggled. She's just struggled with it. Uh, and, and, and again, we can be real about it. Yeah. Uh, so she yeah. can, s- you know, she said to me after you did your talk, the thing, Pastor Milton, I said, she said, hey, sh- actually, she said it to my wife. Hey, you know, Pastor Jemo checks like almost all the <laughs> boxes on that list of the different kinds of fathers. Um, but even as she said it to me later, oh, I, this is what I said to Pastor Dockers. I, I, I know that there's still a, a, a gap in there. But it's not because she's not a daughter. I can see she's a daughter in how he serves, in, in how she serves, in her attitude towards me and Pastor Dockers and so on. But I recognize that there's a struggle there. So maybe that, that for me has been my experience. That for me there was a, there was a transition uh, that happened. I think I was able to cross that line quickly. I remember for me, you know, like you said, family is messy. Even when Pastor M has said something that for me was hurtful and maybe I didn't understand. Even in the gap of time between you know, the thing has happened and I've come to you and I've talked about it, which, which is what we do. Uh, in that gap, I've been sure that, eh, I know Pastor M loves me, so I'm not, I'm not questioning motive, I'm not questioning where it's coming from. I'm like, uh, I'll say it just either to get perspective or for him to understand, you know, what he felt on my side. But I've not questioned, is this a place where I'm loved? Is this a place where I'm accepted? And I thank God for that journey. But I've also gotten to see the other side of the journey, where yeah. there's people who are willing uh, to commit. And I can even see they're kind of already living in their life, but there are still some struggles. And they have some strong foundations, uh, where there's a f- strong foundation to why they're struggling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, again, this, this is some of the reality. Is maybe there are people who you're going to be leading who are just not there. Uh, I love that Jesus walked with that. He didn't let that stop him from loving, from being a father. Um, eventually, he did get to a place where he said, who do you say that I am? And he started by saying, who do people say that I am? Because <laughs> he wanted to hear what people thought. And then he said, but who do you say that I am? And once they affirmed his role, that they understood where he fit and who he was, then he could take them deeper. There's some things he just knew. I just have to go with you. I have to go at your speed. I have to wait until you're there. And that's just what parents do. And so it's just a journey. You're going to carry this journey yourself. So I thought we thought just by sharing our story, it'll help you because in your campuses, you're going to go through this journey. Uh, as you start your discipleship groups, as you try to shepherd people and make disciples, we're all going to be faced with this. Because a discipleship group is not a Bible study. It's a life transfer. And you can't transfer your life with people who are not ready for you to do that. And so you just have to win them over and to build a family. Would you guys like to hear Pastor Carol's uh, thing? Uh, she, you know how she always, she's always been so easy. She always follows everything I say. She's always believed in me. She's never doubted. She's right. Okay, someone give her a microphone so she can affirm all those things that I've said. <laughs> do, you, do you have a, okay, there, there's one coming. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. So, uh, for me, the struggle was real, and um, it began before the conversations began, and, um, and I think we have history. I mean, when you've been married <laughs> for 28 years, that's yeah. a long time. That's a lot of history. And you do have a lot of history. Uh, the history that we, we've had um, with Pastor Marith is that um, we went to the same school. We, we went to University of Nairobi together. We did courses together. Then after that, we went uh, t- uh, to, to do our masters and we pursued our masters together. And then when we came back, I'm really just cutting short the story. When we came back, we were laid hands on together and commissioned to, you know, to, to start Mavuno. And even before Mavuno started, I mean, the conversations uh, that we would have, uh, I remember once, we went on a retreat together and we're kind of just talking through uh, church. We were talking through, at the time we were also talking through our business. And you know, it has always been like that. Um, I think when it comes, uh, maybe the, the confusing thing is that when it comes to the home, we, you know, we discuss everything. And the confusing thing for me was when we were in church, uh, we were not discussing anything. <laughs> and, um, and you know, I guess, you know, and for Pastor Moridi, he was the leader. And I think men and women think dif- differently. Women, we tend to be very horizontal in our relationships. 
whereas for men, they are, very, they are vertical. And uh, I, I think in the whole, I think men understand the hi hierarchy. Hier hierarchy comes to men very easily. And maybe some of the, sco the schools that they attended, are, some are hier hierarchical, you know. And so, but for me, you know, even when I went to Form 1, I had sisters. You had an older sister who showed you the ropes. And so that hierarchy was just so confusing. And, and I must say that the struggle was really real. It was, it was not easy, and it was, it was a very difficult space. Yeah. Uh, I've since resolved it. Uh, that's, that's, what part of it. that's what we're waiting to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I've, I've since uh, resolved it, and um, I think a key verse that uh, that helped me was, um, you know, in Ephesians it talks about wives submitting to their husbands as unto the Lord, and so I was like, oh, okay. So when I do this, this is what pleases God, then I'll do it. And so I think that's, that's what gave me the ease, that's what gives me the ease at home, that's what gives me the ease uh, here at, at, at work. Um, but as the conversations have been going on uh, this time that we've been talking and he's been sharing about um, the army, I realized there's a small little bit that I have not yet uh, and we're going to have that conversation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think what happens is that you think that you're done, and then you re and then God just continues to expose to you uh, the things that um, you know that you still need to surrender. And I think when we talk about the fears of um, what if you know there's this thing I'm doing, what if uh, I I consult him and and you know things just go south, what if? And um, so I think from this, uh, this time, this gathering, or one of the things that I'll, I'm thinking is that, okay, I'm actually going to surrender this thing. And I surrender it as unto the Lord. And, and, I, and I tell God, first of all, it just makes me say, okay, I'm going to pray even more fervently for my leader. I will do that, and then I will follow. And, and just allow, uh, and, and just say, yeah, just allow things. I mean, let, let's just see what happens. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. When you put your wife on the spot and then she's talking, you have no clue where she's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> but thank you, sweetie. That's, that's, that's amazing. It's a great yeah. journey we've been on. We, yes. Uh, and maybe one of the things that um, God just um, was uh, revealing, you know, a while ago was, I, I think I, I see the graces in your life. And I'm like, yeah, I don't have this grace. And so I began to pray and to say, Lord, the anointing that you've put on that man, I want that anointing. I really do. Yeah. yeah. And or someone says double portion, I don't know. But anyway, and so and so I'm like, I, I am I'm willing to do whatever it takes from a spiritual perspective. Um, yeah, I'm 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 willing. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Now, I guess we're sharing your, our story, but maybe you have questions, maybe you have uh, concerns, or maybe just a testimony. Maybe for you, you've also gone through a similar journey, uh, and we'll, we'll, be, we'll be opening the, the floor in a second, so just be thinking about it, and we'll just try and get a few comments, and just make sure that people get a chance to also uh, give their thoughts. I know, Pastor Victor, your journey was like Pastor Milton. You had already planned your exit yes. and resignation from Mavuno. Yes. And then um, something changed. My, my struggle was rather different. Because um, as everyone was fine calling you boss, I wasn't. And I couldn't understand why we are in church and we are calling you boss. And I chose personally to look at you as my dad. And I remember for quite a long time I was having conversations with Pastor Angie then and... Uh, Pastor Jade, and I kept on asking them questions and questions and questions. But then their direction was always, you know what? He's our boss. And me, I was like, no. This thing is just pushing, pushing me far and far and far and far. Yet I, need, I needed to lean in more. And uh, while I was serving in one of the campuses, I had a really, really tough experience. And I said, this is it. And I remember that day I'd had a conversation with my wife and I told her, you know what, uh, this is the, re the resignation letter we've written. 
and I'll send it on the 31st. If God doesn't speak, uh, next year we don't have a job. Uh, we're going to go back to, because she was full uh, in business, we, I'm going to continue supporting you in business, and that would be your life. And uh, on the 28th, an email came over what I had requested that God would speak, and that was a change from where I was. But then I fast forward to 2020 when uh, I planted the church, COVID came, everyone went home, church came back, uh, we were only the four of us. And uh, during that period, I, I remember I called back my wife and I told her, you know what, uh, in the journey that we've just decided to embark on, because I remember almost all campuses were closed, I told her it was a difficult journey that we were going to, to continue on, but God will reward. And one of the things that I hear him say is, push on without giving up. And remember th every other time I used to share I used to share, I used to share, and people are like, hey, my friends, you close. Why are you putting so much energy uh, in running a church when you guys are only four? But I was like, no, 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 no. What you're seeing is not what I'm seeing. And what I am seeing is thousands of people. Yeah. Though I am pushing it right now, I'm pushing it for them. I'm not pushing for me. And... Uh, I remember after about six weeks is when the first person came in. That was Chitwa. She's somewhere. Rita. Right here. Rita Chitwa. Yeah. First member of the church apart from your fa immediate apart family. Apart from my immediate family. And uh, we did the first Sunday together. I waited to see whether she'd come back the following Sunday. She came. We were still five. I waited to see whether she'd come back the third Sunday. She came. Hey, so I was curious. So I went... After, after church, the way guys make announcement, I was like, Chito, I'd like to see you after the service. Uh, there's something important you want to discuss. So my family went and chilled for me. She came to see the, <laughs> the lead pastor. pastor of the campus. <laughs> As the congregation was dismissed. As the congregation was dismissed. <laughs> so I asked her, I want you to tell me one thing. You've been coming for three weeks straight without missing service. What are you seeing? What had, has made you keep coming when there are no people? And he told me, you know what? Pasi, I believe in your vision. And as much as I was with my family, I used to share the big vision of thousands. Wow. This is where the campus is going. This is what I am seeing. This is where God is taking us. And she told me, I have seen it. And besides serving you and being under you in this campus, I'm also serving God, and he's planted me here. And Pasi, I will walk with you. Wow. And I told her, thank you so much. So good. Yeah. And true to her words, uh, we continued on. When I saw we'd reached 17 members, I called her again. I told her, I announced again in church, Chito, I want to see you after service. <laughs> now this time we were 17. So she comes, then I tell her, by the way, I am leaving you the church. Don't call me, don't text me, don't WhatsApp me. If the church falls, it is the church of God. It is not mine. I am going for a month to seek God. Remember, I was having the battles of why we are calling you father. We are calling you boss. Yeah. So I explained to her and I told her, I am off. If it falls, don't worry. Let it fall. When I am back after a month, I'll come and help you. Together with my family, we will help raise it up. And she said, Pasi, Sawa, you go. Wow. Then I remember I went, she didn't call me for, for the month. Then I came back all charged up and excited that I told her, you know what? God has given me a word for the church. And as he has given me a word for the church, he's also given me as someone for the church. So she was excited, she was like, hey, so what are you going to preach? I told her, God has told me, take your people back to the basics, teach them about the church. And I was like, okay. So at the time I, I, I remember when I was away, as I was seeking God and praying and walking over, I kept on listening to him and I'd written someone's for three months straight. 
about the church, which was talking about different things. And I started teaching them about fatherhood. And I remember during that time, I, I tried to reach out to uh, Pops right here, calling him dad, Pops, and all that, and he wasn't responding. <laughs> and my wife would it have was different so, It was so weird. I was like, father of who? Yeah. <laughs> and my wife <laughs> would have different conversations, and he would respond. Till I was like, are you sure we are having the same numbers? Let me confirm. <laughs> It's like, these numbers are the same. So I'm confused why I'm, I'm, I'm having to call him uh, boss. I'm confused he's not responding. Mm. But I was like, you know what? I have heard from God. Let me teach. And I started teaching in September of 2021 about fatherhood. And I remember with a few who are there, I started telling them, this is what Pastor M is. He's our father. Pastor Carol is our mom. Then we went down to Pastor Angie. I taught them, Pastor Angie within the network is our mom, Pastor Nick is our dad. When we come down to the campus, I am. And one of the things that I kept on telling them is, what, if for me, trying to look at you as, uh, trying to look at you as a boss, I felt I am comparing you as a sheep, yet you are not a sheep. I looked at you as a shepherd, because the work of the shepherd is to take care of the sheep, and that the work of the sheep is to give birth to other sheep. So wow. the compass in, in me, in the revelation that I had, the compass was struggling. Remember, we were 417, because I kept on looking at you as a fellowship, and I felt as much as I had elevated you to your place of a shepherd, <laughs> me and the other sheep would give birth to more sheep and we would grow so that the work of the shepherd would remain on you as a shepherd. Then the people were confused because they were like, hey, this is Pastor Vic, this is not something that Mavuno teaches. It's not something that uh, the church does. Are you trying to be uh, a different church from what Mavuno is? I was like, no, it, we are the same, but there's something that I have seen. And I believe, for me, it is this, or it is this, I had no other option, according to me at the time. This was it, and this was what I strongly, that is what I strongly believed. And funny enough, when I started teaching them about the church, and what fatherhood looked like, and what the benefits of fatherhood were, because I kept on telling them, we are not receiving the inheritances, because when I come home with my friend, and my dad would see me coming with him every day of our friendship life. When he gets to write a will, he will never include them in the will. He will only write a will to the sons and daughters mm. as much as they are our friends. So I told them, this is what I am seeing. There's something here. And each week I kept on teaching that to them. I saw the church expanding and expanding and expanding, and wow. I got more excited, wow. and I continued teaching more and I, more, 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 up until I think it was about October or of the year 2021 is where now I had Mavuno, or rather you, bringing up the conversations of fatherhood, and yeah. I was like, this is what I was waiting for. Amen. Yeah, and true to, to me from that time to right now, to see the growth that we have, I'm just thankful that I stuck to what I felt in my spirit. Yeah. I followed through without giving up, and I have truly seen the growth which God has wow. brought within the campus. What a story. Oh my goodness. So if you, are, you ask why we are here, it's Pastor Vic's prayers. It's his fault. Because he was praying for us to become a different church from what he was seeing us as being. But we thank God for you, that you had the courage to follow your conviction and to call out what you were not seeing in this movement. Yeah for you and your wife. Yeah. Uh, could I say something? Yeah. First time? Um, I think one of the things I've come to learn during this journey is the individual determines their level of the connection. Yeah. Whereby if I choose not to align myself as a son, I won't be a son. I may be a slave in the house. Yeah. I'm doing everything right, but as a slave. But uh, when it comes to 
choosing whether to be a son or not. Um, it's the individual's prerogative. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, the, the father may have some responsibility, but the son themselves actually makes the father their father. Yeah. Uh, I have um, a, a member within our congregation that for me I'm even learning how to be a son. Uh, I don't know whether I could share this, but uh, um, let me throw them on the spot. Uh, the guy is called Jaoko. I knew that's who you were going to talk about. You knew that's who <laughs> I'm going to. Yeah. Um, Jaoko is a very interesting man, him and his wife, Beryl. Yeah. Uh, they chose they will be our children. In fact, because we, we, we don't have adult children, they inducted us into having adult children in our lives. Yeah. And they pushed every button possible to be sons and to be a daughter. As in, you know the way you would behave with your dad? Uh, that's how they behaved with us. Um, I think we've known them for about a year and a half or two, but they've slept in our house more than any other visitor combined. <laughs> As in, if you, if you combine all the visitors we had like in Pine City here for eight years, they were in our house more than everybody else who had Combined. come even for sleepovers. Wow. They came with their children. They allowed us to touch their children, to love their children. They brought you food when they, they came. They brought us food when they came. Uh, and so how is that? Instead of saying we're coming for dinner and then you show up, they show up with the dinner. They show up with dinner that they cook that we all eat. Um, so you can't, you can't say no. You can't say no. <laughs> so they would even come on a Friday and we would leave... Uh, Pine City on Sunday morning going to church together. Wow. As in, we have been in each other's lives like I have never been, even with many of my uh, blood siblings in our adult life. Wow. As in, these guys know that uh, we are at home on Mondays. It's my rest day. I remember twice they've come to the house. They've come with food. They got into the kitchen. Okay, my house is, you get, there, there are two entrances, but now the one that people use mostly is the kitchen one. So you get into the gate, the first thing you enter into is the kitchen. So they get into the kitchen, they make food, and they leave and go home. Wow. As in all they came to do was to make lunch for us, and they go. Come on, Jalcos. As in, they are not asking for anything. Uh, this thing of tarrying, Jaoko and Beryl tarry anywhere, everywhere. Uh, I think wherever I've gone to, they have been there. Wow. And what has happened for me is just to realize that the way they've bared the life, if there is any word like that in English, it has allowed us to bear ours. The way they've been vulnerable with their life, it's allowed us to be vulnerable with ours. Such that at the end of the day, uh, I know for sure that I have a son and a daughter in Jaoko and Beryl. Wow. And that in Audrey and Asaf, I have grandchildren that I never bore. Y you know, because um, their children are now my children. Yeah. I think yeah. they, they even can bring their children to hang out at uh, our home, and then they go somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> and the kids are fine with us at home. But what I've seen is the intentionality yeah. of Jaoko and Beryl to ensure that they are in our lives yeah. and they tarry there. And I know but he's a busy professional. It's not like he doesn't have a busy job. In fact, he's, he's a busy man. He works in a blue chip company. And Beryl is also a busy woman. She even homeschools her children. But you can imagine she can come home. She is also a hairstylist and beautician. By the way, a very good one for the ladies who need whatever. Eh? Talk to her. This, oh, by the way, pay me when the commission. Um, <laughs> but I can't remember the last time Vivian went to a salon. The wow. salon has come to her. Her hair, her nails. You know, even those things people put their feet in. It even comes, as in it comes home. Um, as in she's made her mom beautiful. 
Wow. Uh, uh, wow. So I, I think for me, I, I thought I should share that. I hope I've not embarrassed you guys. Uh, I thought I should share that just I think we need models, because we didn't grow up knowing this. So even I'm learning as I hear And then now story. he's gotten other people whom he's trained to walk the same way. I don't know whether Kate and Ken are here. They are now at that level. Kate and Ken can even bring breakfast for Kesho. Those ones of, Pasi, are you asleep? I'm like, no. Uh, give us like five minutes, we'll be there. By the way, they've come. They've done mandazis, they've done chapels, they've brought sausages, whatever, for breakfast for tomorrow in the morning. Wow. Um, they now call me every day. I, after the 5.30 prayer, by the way, I just know the next thing I will ever do is Kate and Ken will call to pray for me every single day because they've been trained by Jawoko. Wow. So I think one of the things I'm picking up from your people, Pastor Milton, is, you know how people say, the disciple that Jesus loved, you were talking about that. Like, I know you love everybody in Mashariki. Like, I know your heart for your congregation. But there's a way that some people have entered into that space where eventually when they write the story of your life, they'll say, the disciples that Milton and Vivian loved. And it's not like you are trying to discriminate, but there's some people who just knew how to enter into the space of sonship, and that was an advantage to them. And even Yemi, I know he's in Nigeria now. Yemi and his wife, Rosie, uh, again, from just Jaoko's leadership, uh, they're in, in our lives like, oh my goodness, uh, we, we eat Nigerian food almost every week. Uh, uh, and it is supplied in abundance. Wow. Uh, so it's, which, it, which night do they come? Fridays. <laughs> Fridays. It comes on Fridays. Uh, and, and it's enough to go around till, uh, till we, Monday. We have had, we have had. Party. Yeah. <laughs> um, Today's Friday. <laughs> he's in Nigeria. <laughs> um, yeah, but I just wanted to say that one person can multiply themselves oh, in others. On. I love it. And they take the same attributes, character, behavior without being in a classroom. Wow. Oh, come on, that's amazing. Is that an amazing lesson? I think sometimes we need object lessons, people just to show us, oh, this is what it looks like to be a son. Now, Pastor Godwin, you haven't spoken, and then I can, I can open it up, but yeah you, yeah, you have a bit of an army in your church. Like, it doesn't seem like you've struggled to do this. How is it that you do it so naturally? <laughs> so, so from the very beginning, I think like most of us, I was, and I, uh, from a young age, I was very apprehensive towards authority. So apprehensive towards authority, whether it's teachers, my biological parents. In fact, there's a time my mom would give an instruction and I would deliberately go against the instruction because either way I'd be beaten at the end of the day. <laughs> so, so anyway, so I was very apprehensive towards authority. And so getting into a space where now I have my own kind of independent life and I end up in Mavuno Lifeway. I meet uh, Papa Kilo and Pastor Faith. <laughs> yes, yeah. and to be honest, one of the reasons why I stuck is because I saw a different kind of authority. Where I was like, hey, this guy is not like, he's, in fact, he was my boys, like my guy. Uh, there are times we would go jogging um, on Saturday morning. Um, <laughs> He started a group called Menopoly, started walking with a couple of men. Uh, we go jogging on Saturday morning, and then we go do breakfast together. If you are late, excellent, sir. Huh? If you are late for that 6 a.m. jog, you come, we meet in, the, I used to host the meeting, so we meet at my place, and then you lie down, and the men rain blows on you <laughs> to institute discipline. So... <laughs> So we became so close with Papa Kilo. <laughs> and he looks my, like such a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, and he's my father in ministry. He called me out. I started serving as an associate. But he came one day and told me, as, after we served in the music team that day, he came and told me, I see, in fact, I remember he said, I, you're, you're such a great leader, but I see God taking you to a higher level of leadership. Wow. Ideally, he was telling me, follow me, but not in those words. But then again, I was very apprehensive towards authority. So I was like, ah, this is my boy telling me, giving me a suggestion. 
Remember like what Major Boke said yesterday, uh, we'd be richer without this guy. And then <laughs> we might be richer. So I, I took that as a suggestion. This is such a good thing. He's telling me to do discovery. It's a good thing to do, uh, but I don't feel like it. So I had a Jonah moment there for about eight months, running away from this kind of authority. I didn't want to do anything. You know, I didn't want anything to do with church. And so eventually I said yes to discovery because he kept persisting. He kept coming, he kept coming, even after several rejections, and I'll pray about it. Um, and so eventually I joined the, 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 the pastoral team through discovery, and I was posted in, uh, at first I was stationed here in Hill City. I started serving in Campus Trend. That's where I met Lois from Mabuno Kiambu Road. She was in uh, Daystar. We were doing Mrs. at that time. And then one season later, I was posted in Mavuno Kids, uh, Lovington. That's where now my apprehensiveness and rejection of authority came in, and it was an ugly, ugly thing, because looking back, I was rebellious. I remember uh, Pastor M have, had a conversation with Pastor Kilonzi and told Pastor Kilonzi, uh, I'm quoting Pastor Kilonzi, so I hope this is what you said. <laughs> it's not on me. The gospel according to Papa Kilo. Yes. So, so Pastor M told Pastor Kilonzi, I want Pastor Godwin to be a church planter. Would you take him under your wings um, so yeah. that I go back he, to life? He didn't lie. He didn't yeah. lie. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so at that point, we were going through a transition in Mavuno Lovington. And so I resisted that idea. I was like, no, I, I still want to be in Mavuno Kids. In fact, I went and I approached Pastor Caro because she was overseeing Mavuno Kids. And I asked her, would you allow me to continue in Lovington for at least two seasons. But then Pastor Caro said something that uh, she deferred to the higher authority. Commanders yes, commanders in turn. She said, this is above me. Uh, talk to Pastor Moraes. <laughs> I was like, if it's above Pastor Caro, whom am I? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and so that story ended there. I begrudgingly <laughs> said yes to going back home. Again, I love Mavuno Lifeway. So I went back home uh, Papa Kilo started now walking with me. Again, this conversation about fatherhood is not there, but he's fathering me. He fathered me. Um, six months after I went back to Lifeway is when the transition now with Pastor Kevin Derry to going to the States happened. And I was told now you have to step up because Pastor Kilonzi is stepping up to Mavuno downtown. You have to step up now to lead Mavuno Lifeway. Um, and so, so after that, now several things happened. Let me cut short the story. Several things happened, and I was called now to join the executive team. And shortly after, I get into this space. People are loving on each other. People are pouring their hearts out. The conversations about family is starting. And I still couldn't see Pastor M as my father. <laughs> I don't have such a good history with my biological father. So I'm still those ones for, eh, I hear Pastor M says, we have fridge rights. But you know you can go to his fridge and then you will find, find attached evidence of you misbehaving in my house. <laughs> so I still put him and Pastor Caro in some place that, you know, they, they are inaccessible, um, in, unapproachable. And I couldn't picture this thing, you know, called fatherhood. I know we had a very good relationship with Pastor Kilonzi and Pastor Faith, but, but just a friendly relationship. But I couldn't see either of them as my spiritual parents. And so I remember the shift up happened around the same time Pastor Milton is saying when we started now traveling, doing missions together. And I see that's the value of every discipleship group to be missional. And that's the difference even with life groups, Come on. that we are missional. So we started doing missions together. We've gone to Mombasa together. We went to Kakamega together. We played games. We ate ice cream. We went just spending time together. And then I realized this is actually my spiritual family. And finally it clicked that this is my, you know, behold your father, behold your mother. And so that's the shift that happened for me. Wow. And it reached a point now where I was like, if this is my father, I'm going to follow. I'm going to put my brain in the kit bag. I'm going, I didn't have those words, but at least I understood now I have to follow. And then another thing that really humbled me was the fact that I was telling Pastor Caro and Pastor Noel that one of the things that made me resist this thing, this followership, is the fact that I thought I was very creative. You know, I'm a young man with all those ideas that Pastor M normally says. He thought he had several ideas that are better than Pastor Bishop Oscar's. And so I was in that cut. I was like, when Pastor M gives an instruction, I'm like, how can I contextualize this, make it better for Lifeway? 
They are the hippest network in this movement. And so God really humbled me when one day it hit me that I have, I have never planted a movement that had 33 churches strong. I've barely planted a church. I, I stepped into the shoes of Pastor Kilonzi. I've barely planted a church. And so whom am I to think that I'm better than my spiritual father? And so it was such a humbling thing to know that there are graces in his life that I have to submit to. And as I follow, I become. And I've become. I've become. I have more authority because I'm stepping on the shoulders of a giant. Yeah, yeah. Wow, thanks for that. You know, I, I thought you'd have such a small story because you're the youngest in the group. <laughs> I mean, that's an intense story. And again, just shows the kind of struggle that we're all going through. I think it's something that just helps us begin to understand. Yes, moving from being a traditional church to becoming a global movement, mm. it doesn't happen with a snap of a finger. It doesn't mm. happen with read a scripture and let's do this. Mm. I think, and many of the campus pastors here, if they were to give their story, they would have similar stories of struggle, but then also of struggle as they've tried to now lead their people and mm. the struggles that they know their people are experiencing as they're asking mm. these questions. Mm. So we want to just, uh, we're going to open this up. And what I'd like to do is, first of all, give you an opportunity maybe just to chat with your neighbor and say, what have you picked up in this session? What do you sense God is saying in this session? Is there anything that you've picked up? Or maybe what is, you've picked up is a question of, oh my gosh, uh, what are these guys saying? So you can ask that. But what is something that you sense God might be saying to you in this session? So let's just have a bit of a conversation. And then my mic guys will be ready and we'll have a few, um, a few comments from our, our people. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Check, check. Check, check, check. Okay. Um, just maybe you can conclude the thoughts. I'll give you a, couple, a minute just to conclude that thought, whoever is sharing. And we can hear just some feedback from the, from the audience. Um, what are you hearing? Actually, I shouldn't say from the audience. I should say some feedback from the army. Yeah. What, what's the army thinking? How are you processing this? Uh, what's this conversation doing? And if you have a question for one of these guys, you can also ask it uh, if, you're, if, that's, um, if that's what you prefer to do. So, awesome. All right, let's hand the mics out uh, to whoever has a hand up and is ready to share. There's one right here in the middle or two. Yeah, there's somebody. Is there somebody on that side? All right, there's someone standing already. Okay, so tell your neighbor, shh. All right, please go, go ahead, just say your name and campus and then tell us your thought. Uh, my name is Steve Moshoki uh, from Hill City Campus. Uh, for me, we were discussing with my wife and uh, one, of the, uh, uh, discuss one of the points we were discussing was the fact that uh, the concept of fatherhood is there, but uh, we've not found ourselves in that place of calling out uh, the father as as uh, as you are putting it yeah and so sometimes that becomes a struggle you know like uh like pastor james is a is a spiritual uh, authority in this place but we've not found ourselves taking time to just call out like this the the way we are saying that it is us who are supposed to call out the fathers yeah so we've not been able to do that and probably because of that we've not um been able to allow the graces that are in the lives of our spiritual authority to flow in us. And wow. consequently, we are not able to allow the, the, the graces that are in our lives to also flow to the people that we are leading. Wow. Sometimes uh, my wife and I, have, we, have, we, have, we have been best coupled to a few couples. And sometimes they call us dad and mom, and we just feel that thing is foreign, <laughs> you know. It's just foreign because uh, I think probably also the upbringing and um, the experiences we've had of uh, even places where they call mom and dad, it has been, you know, like it, it looks a bit odd. But I think yeah. at this space right now, we are enjoying the aspect that now we are understanding the reason why uh, we need to call out the fathers that are in our lives yeah. so that the graces that are in their lives 
will be able to apportion, to be apportioned into our lives. Come on. And then the graces that we are also experiencing, together with the graces that come from our spiritual authority, yeah. is now able to go uh, to the people that we are leading. I love it. And so um, I think that concept itself uh, for, for us is an eye opener. And wow. now we are trusting God that even as we are leading a DG, that we will be able to um, now uh, put into practice these things. And so uh, we just want to honor our spiritual authority even at this particular time. I think that's one of the things we said we can do, probably moving forward. And so we just want to honor uh, Pastor James and Pastor Dorcas. Come on, Pastor James. As our spiritual father. And even call it out. Because I think that's, that's for me, that's, that's what we said. We just call it out. Yeah. And we also want to uh, call it out also in, in you, Pastor M and Pastor, uh, and Pastor Carol, that you are our spiritual father, and we receive that. Amen. And, and you are a spiritual mother, and we receive that. And so that's what we just wanted to say. Thanks. Thank you, George. Wow. Come on, somebody. It's interesting. Uh, the Mushokis made this T-shirt. Uh, when I said yesterday, I'm, just, I'm, not sm I'm not that smart. I'm just following. And I said, someone should put this on a T-shirt. And so they did, and they have a bunch of t-shirts. So if you want to see them outside after this, they actually have about like 40 of these. And that's called following hard. So God bless you. May you, may you receive a lot of wealth because of your following. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Who's next? Hello? Where are you? I'm here. Oh, here, oh here. there you are. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for this opportunity I've been dying to <laughs> to tell my story and to give a testimony hi pastor Gordy. <laughs> i'm from that network and my name is yvonne kihumba sometimes i go by the name yellow yellow like the color you'll come to know later anyway um in my former church i was banned from serving by my pastor and he was a male of course and um that really hurts me. Um, but I remember the last conversation that I had with him. And he told me, Yvonne, you have been trying to take my job for the longest time. Wow. And um, you even stopped calling me Papa. And then I was like, it meant so much to him that I called him Papa and I didn't realize. The thing was, I was taught how to lead Bible study. And in that church, there was nothing like discipleship. And I was so fascinated by that subject. So um, when the youth are taking samosas, I would do discipleship evangelism. So by the time he was employed by the church, he found me doing that. And um, honestly, now looking back, OK, according to psychology, they would say that he would feel he was feeling threatened. And I know that I am gifted in so many ways. Come on. <laughs> yes. Um, but there's something sometimes science doesn't have, and it's the aspect of love, and God is love. So I know that I have the gift of prophecy, and um, the, some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it didn't make it easier, even maybe a psychiatrist telling you what spectrum you are at in the IQ level. So uh, I, I knew that I was gifted, so I wanted to do everything how I wanted to do it. And so I didn't want to be led. I didn't want to be led. Yeah. So this all started with my dad. Now you can see where all of this is going. Um, I started living alone when I was 16 years old. And I thank God some years later, um, I got to spend some time with Sheik's mom. Sheik's mom, we were talking about chauvinism in the church. Then she told me, let me introduce you to my daughter. Sheik's is from Lovington, wherever she is. <laughs> yeah, so she worked with me. And as much as she's female, she taught me the importance of honoring my dad, even though he had hurt me. And... Um, I, I was able to fix, like, God helped me fix the relationship with my dad. But there is one thing even psychiatrists, uh, psychologists weren't able to do, even sheikhs wasn't able to do, is for me to feel God as my father. Mm. 
And it was such a struggle. I was like, I've done about three months of therapy and I still don't feel God as a father. So I wrote a poem about it, of which I thank God Pastor Godwin gave me the platform on Father's Day to talk about it on, on the, in life way. So later, um, I came to know God as a father with time. I asked God of all the names in this world you chose, Father, not even mother, Father, surely. At a way God, like, what were you thinking? Yeah. But God showed me his love. I kept reading the Bible, and I kept affirming the inheritance that he has for me. Like, which father knows the hairs of my head? Which father put me in my mother's womb? Mm. That's why he didn't choose mother. He put me in my mother's womb. Yeah. And that was very, very profound, knowing his thoughts about me. And me accepting God as a father made my relationship with my earthly father even better. I started honoring him no matter what he does. And so that came later in Pastor Godi, I think I was rebellious. <laughs> Not I think, I was rebellious. Like, because of the heart, I didn't want to serve in so many spaces. But Pastor Godwin is very, very patient. <laughs> so, because of knowing God as a father, later on, um, I was able to honor Pastor Godi as a father. And that came in handy because I went to this job and it was for a Hindu and I would get um, like demonic attacks. But now since I have a father, I would tell God, ah, God, you own all the people in the world. You won't take care of me. I'm sure you would take care of me. And my statistics were one of my KPIs, were one of the best KPIs in that company. Within the first month after training, I was due for a bonus and I was like, Allah. <laughs> and God is so amazing. I felt so close and so sheltered by him. And me telling Pastor Godi, like I don't have, as much as uh, I can say I was prideful because I knew, ah, see I'm gifted. So all this and so all this I don't have to do, like I don't have even to tell Pasi because God will tell me directly. But no, there's a reason why God chose Pasi Godi to be my pastor. Because now I just text him and tell him, Pasi Godi, hey, me so to demons come chapa me. Pasi Godi wouldn't stand. He would tell me, like he taught me, I know Pastor M, you had taught us how to make an altar, but... I thank God because Pasi Godi is nearer and he repeated and now I understood. And he taught me how to use anointing oil. I learned how to take Holy Communion on my own within that period of time. And sonship is just the best way to belong. Amen. And I thank God so much for wow. this point. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for that story. Powerful story. Hi, uh, are you next? You're standing? Okay. Ha hello. Sorry, Hi. I have poor eyesight, so I needed someone to give me the cue. All right, that's yeah. all right. So I know you. Uh, let me try and start practicing. Papa James is our papa. I'm from <laughs> Hill City. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that It's awkward when you first say it, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember yeah. even when I started praying and saying, Daddy, it was so awkward. It took me such a long time, so I hear you. Keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so anyway, uh, uh, I think one of the greatest conversations that are coming through is that there's so much heartache about fathers. And I'm hoping even in the transitions that the fathers will heal so that they can be fathers to very, very many people. Yeah. And because every conversation that will happen, chances are it's because there was a brokenness in, you know, my mom was a single parent, so of course there was no father. Uh, okay, I got married to a very loving man. He's the only one who now, when I look with hindsight, taught me what father's love is, but again, he died. Uh, then, um, when he died, of course, you secretly look for that love, and then before he died, my mom, who really, really loved me, died. Wow. So, uh, anything that looked like love for me was all taken away. And one of the battles I had with God is, yes, I trust you, but I don't trust you. 
And I remember like we, we'd been doing the Bible with my children and when we got to, I, where, there are times when I would intensely tell the children, Aki, I'm feeling so loved. There are things that God would do. But I go back, quickly go back to, and yeah, God, you don't love me. I remember like the last one is when now we got to Isaiah chapter one. I remember even when we were praying with the children, I cried. And after that, I went into such a low mood because I was like, why can't you just love me the way you loved the Israelites? That you even come and tell them, I will forgive you. I will love you. I will be gracious to you. And I would be like, yes, I know you're supposed to be speaking to us, but you are telling the Israelites. So fatherhood is something that is going to really, really break people. But anyway, back to the conversation. Uh, I know when this conversation shifted about this, before that I was with the prayer team. And interestingly, as in the prayer team, we were always praying for Mavuno to become family. We really were praying. We really were praying. So, but interestingly enough is that when it shifted, probably because the conversation did not come the way we wanted it to, me, I was the most resistant, and I know <laughs> Pastor James can attest, I'm sure he saw me and he was like, oh my God. But I was the most, I would question everything. And I, there's someone who shared earlier, I think, like, and then that thing of like, Connie, we, are, we can't think. Why are we being told that what he has preached is what I'm preaching? What if God has spoken something different in my heart? And, you know, just that rebellious thing of like, why do I have to be told this thing? But I remember when the first time I, when I listened to the, my heart shifted in November when we were doing the last gathering last year. Something just clicked and I wow. got, I repented because it's just something that opened up my heart. And it clicked, it clicked. But now the struggle is following now from November became me, I didn't even have a problem. In fact, I used to be the kind, because I'm not really a DJ leader, but when our DJ leader would not be able, she would ask me to, before I'd be like, why? You know, I'd be like, me, I'm not, in fact, I must, please, me, Staki, you know, I'd be the first one who'd be like, Staki, me, I don't want leadership, me, I don't want ministry, me, Mambo, me, Staki, me, I'm here. You know those ones of, you want money? I will give you. You want what? I will give you. Ukumbele, see, easy vitu, mimi, sitaki. And so, this conversation is now, when that happened, I shifted and I would be like, even when I'm told, even, even if she sends me the link 10 minutes before me, I'd be like, I am available. Wow. But now the conversation has now changed to fatherhood. Help us transition because there's a time I, we, when we're talking about money, I even stopped watching family. The, the Wednesday, I stopped because you are talking about money. Everyone in your group was married. And you're telling them you can survive on one salary. And I felt so much no love from the person calling me to love me. I'm a widow. So uh, how, how do you incorporate me in this journey as a widow of love? Like, okay, I may have made it wrong. How does that, this one income that has suddenly is supposed to feed one child, one person with three children. And of the th one of the three children, one is a special needs. And no one is loving on me. How? I come to church, it's everyone goes, I'm going through something, I'll even tell people close to me, no one will come. I'm like, so when it transitions to love, and I remember that time when you're having, I even told Pastor James, how can you tell me? You don't include these widows. How do you then tell me you love me? I have a special needs. No one will care. Yes, you're telling of inclusivity, but what of those things when she's having, you know, tantrums and seizures and I'm walking alone? I am in a situation the school has said they cannot give her anything anymore. Go back for assessment at Kise. Kise is telling me that it will take me another three months to get this assessment. No school is willing to take her. I am there with her. There is no one to walk this journey with me. I have, I have, I, you know, the way you feel your world is everything is going through. And even he is aware of a situation I went through in 2020, a very traumatic thing from a man that happened in the family. It just disoriented me. So now when we come and we are talking about fathers, I remember you prayed over me and you spoke. So, okay, just part of last year, one of the things I remember I would cry and tell God, surely, are you really my father? Even if I am a sinful person, isn't there a moment you're going to come and tell me what you told Jesus, that I am proud of you, that I love you? So when on Wednesday, 
I wasn't able to come in the morning. But the moment you spoke it, the spirit told me, you've been asking for it, go for it. I took an Uber. I ran here. I remember, you remember I called you and I was like, you must pray for me because I've been asking God to affirm me. He has affirmed me. But now the journey of getting to fatherhood. Because even as you were having those, qu those conversations on money, I kept feeling, why is Percy, even when we started, because you know, the conversations as you've grown, it's matured, it's made more sense to you and even how to execute it. I was feeling like, why is Percy telling us to be in DG groups to grow, but him, his group is not growing. It is just going to be the exact pastors that he will love on them, then they will feel the love. Nasisi, and that's why when you said, and I was like, me, I'm jealous, because you're loving on them. Nasisi, tunapendwa na nani, umebaki executive, haiku, ikuba, nasisi, unataka tuongezeke a hundred other people. You, you, you know, it's, it, it, and it all boils back to wanting a father's love that we may never have gotten, and we want it. So how does it, and I was even discussing with them that the other concern for me is that the DG groups are the bigger. And in, when, we, when, uh, when we were being spoken to about the army, yes, I grew up in an army, so when it comes to instructions, I have no issue, but love can never be instructed. So these DG groups are going to be like a thousand, one million. They all have their issues. How will your love be expressed to the exec, to those, to the DG leaders, and to me, who wants to be loved? And so that I don't feel jealous. Nataka kuamba. Nakupendwa. Ile ya ukweli naeze ingia kwa friji yako ni chukwe maziwa. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I just want to say thank you for being honest and being real. And it's true. I mean, maybe sometimes we're insensitive. And you know, we're, continue, we're probably going to continue being so because of what is called particularity. There's so many particular situations in the church. And you've mentioned one particular one, but there's somebody else who's left out because of a different particular one. And so this team cannot love the whole church. And that's why we need fathers across every part. And what we are trying to do when you say we need to do something to teach it, that's exactly what we are doing now. We're saying we need to multiply the love. We need all of you to see this so that you can now do it in your families. So we're doing, the, we're doing our best that we can with the understanding that, you know what, it can't be just us. And you know when you say that this family will, 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 will never admit, these guys are all growing. They're all multiplying. They're all adding people into this group. And the whole idea for me is, Papa Kilo is not going to be here forever. I know, I know he's going. These are international pastors. Yeah? As, they're, as they're growing, they're going to leave. Because for me to keep them here and love them the rest of my life, would actually be stifling them. So I'm getting them to grow and to replace themselves because they're also leaving to go to the places that God is, because this thing is supposed to expand. I can't keep them in Jerusalem and hope for us to reach the rest of the world. So we want to model that. I mean, they, they know that. They know, but I will still love them because I'll be their parent, even if they're in America, even if they're in Europe, even if they're in Turkey, wherever they will be because that's what a parent does. And our hope is that every group will be like that. The reason you're bringing the people in it's because you want your children to have children, and then you can move to being a parent of them as they are now looking after their children. So I don't want to th you to think we're being hypocrites, that we're doing exactly what we've asked you to do. But there's a labor of love. All of these guys are different, and so I've had to learn to love them in their different spaces. And my hope then is, every discipleship group leader, you will actually be particular about where your people are. I have a widow in my group. It means that we have to include our widow. I have a child who is uh, uh, dyslexic or has some different disability. I have to, we have to make sure that's our issue as a group. And where you felt the pain is because we were not yet a family. My hope is that we will become a family. And my hope is you will feel this love uh, as we continue with this process, that it will come. But in the process, just to understand, what you're doing is calling out fathers. Yeah, keep calling us out. Keep calling us out, and let's, let's keep saying, hey, I'm here. And don't get tired sometimes. You heard him saying, he called me out. And if he was of leaving, he would have left. So I'm glad you're not of leaving, that you're even here for a gathering. After all that pain, you're still here. You're not one of those ones of leaving. You're part of this family. We love you, we affirm you. And you know what? You're not less, you're not less. Um, 
my goodness. I mean, we're a young church. My mom's church, my dad's church, they have widow's ministry because they're that age where everybody, you know, maybe at Mavuno now we are maturing to the place where, yes, we need to have something like that. Uh, but it's not been our, so, so I feel like what happens is your situation ends up calling out from the family what the family is not seeing because it has not been there. You know, we've always been the young church, the youth church, and now we are no longer the youth church. Uh, we've got, yes, we have youth, but now we have people that are at different stages of life. And so please don't, don't, don't run away because you're in a painful situation that nobody understands. Use that painful situation. You be the one who drives into the family and says, there are people like me, and we must have an answer for people like me. But we love you, and we're grateful you're here. Yeah, I'm so grateful you're here. Yeah. She actually came when she was watching at home, and she drove, as she says, in an Uber, right in the middle of the meeting when we were doing the father's hugs. And she was like, I'm not, I can't receive a hug virtually. And so she actually took an Uber, came here, and was part of our, our father hug. And I just honor you for, for doing that. God bless you. Yeah. All right, maybe we'll have a couple more. And um, oh, I thought you were holding the mic for somebody. I thought you were one of the mic holders. No. I'm so sorry for ignoring you. Um, I've been in Mavuno since 2011. And, uh, oh, yeah, 2010. So we came from Nigeria straight, Uganda. Then we came uh, to Kenya after having a conversation with the boss. <laughs> so I remember coming into um, Mavuno with my Nigerian uh, mindset. And for us, your, this is your spiritual leader, he's also your father. So it was not difficult for me, but I think the culture I met was, that is the boss. You, you have your own father at home, mind your business. <laughs> not learn how to separate, please. <laughs> so <laughs> I remember we even had a conversation as a staff team, and I was like, how do we honor Pastor M? Like, yeah, we, in my culture, we kneel, we greet. Pastor M was like, no, you see, you know the way Pastor M is. He's like, no, 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 those things, uh, no, it's okay. So I got used to just being, it's Pastor M. For me, even calling him Pastor M at that time was difficult. So I used to look for a name somewhere to give the man. Or when he's not talking, when he's talking to me, my head would just be bowed so that I don't have to call him Pastor M. But, uh, and that continued for a very long time. Then we, we did internship. I remember um, there was a time he, he was, um, he came to me. Okay, there was, there was this rumor. We used to have this grapevine in Mavuno where your stories meet you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my story came to me like, hey, you're about to be moved to Mavuno downtown. I was like, hey, but me, I'm okay in Things Connect. Why, why are they moving me? Pastor M shows up at Teens Connect tent. I said, my friend, you are uh, part of this army. You are moving. The general has said, go report on Wednesday for meeting. I went kicking and screaming. How dare ya? Yeah, now you want to assume the position. And then I went home angry. But I went to downtown. And uh, Pastor Kevin and I, <laughs> Pastor Kevin Kilosi and I started serving together and all that. I think when it clicked for me that this is my father, or when it started coming back, was when I went for sabbatical in his home. Imagine, that was 2021. That's when I went for sabbatical. Before I went, I asked questions around, what am I going to do? What should I do? Should I sleep in the room? Should I sleep in the I, like, I didn't know what to do with myself and this relationship. But he had told me, him and Pastor Kara said, you are tired, you come. And my husband willingly donated me. <laughs> so I went. I, went <laughs> I came to Karen. I remember, and he knows this, for the first two weeks, I was always in the room. I was always in the room. I take my food to the room. I eat in the room. But slowly, I, I start, he started calling me, like, I say, why don't you sit with us? Why don't you have dinner with us? And before you knew it, my language changed. I started calling him, Daddy. Like, I would wait for them when they're coming from the gym in the morning. I'll wait and say, well, be back, daddy and mommy. Like, it just started changing slowly because the, there was just this warmth and love. It just wrapped itself around me for some reason, and I could not escape it. Now, it was easy for me to now call him uh, daddy and call Pastor Carol mommy. So, it had clicked. I was now able to see them as my parents. Now, he gave me people who... 
I know too well. So I'm like, how are you giving me Pastor Kemp? That is, that is my younger brother. Like, how is he my leader again? Like, yeah. so when he gives instruction, guess who the instruction is coming through? My husband. I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> So Pastor Mike will be like, oh, say we are doing, I'm like, and who, who told you? Like Pastor Kilonzi said, I'm like, ah, that is just a suggestion, please. Let's do what we want to do. And because I've worked with Pastor Mike for so long, and anyway, we have been, he has been my, my leader for so long. So <laughs> I don't even know how to say it, but we've struggled, we had a struggle as husband and wife, like, or say, um, I am now the leader in this situation. Allow me to talk. So I'll be like, okay, I'm, I'm keeping quiet in my... I'm waiting. Before he even finishes, I'm like, hey, but me, I know what... You know, uh, we did we a did, uh, school of ministry together. And I always scored highest. Like, I scored higher than him. So I'm like, but I also know God talks to me. The Holy Spirit, he also talks to me. What, what do you mean? I have my own things. <laughs> So, so I think, I, I think my thing is just, it is this week that it has clicked for me. Like as, as recently as yesterday, wow. when we we're receiving the father hug, I just felt the Holy Spirit convict me. Like, can you walk up to Pastor Kilonzi and just submit? There is no, and I went to him and I said, I have taken you, <laughs> I've been taking you as my brother, but now I accept you as my father. Wow. You are my father now. Wow and and, and uh, pastor faith so even even i don't even think she knew what i was doing was it this morning or yesterday morning i actually stood by her to finish what she would like i waited for her i'm like this is how i would honor my mom whatever she's doing i would stay with her i would wait by her let her help her finish what she's doing help her you know round up and then bring her to the space when it's all nice and dandy and that's what that's what I see, that's what I've been doing for them, just to, for me to force myself into that space of yeah. these are my parents, like yeah. whether I like it or not. Now, lastly, um, Pastor Mike always says, Osai, a reluctant leader will also give back to reluctant leaders. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, reluctant me, way, way, not doing it. <laughs> and I'll walk off. <laughs> so, so yesterday, I actually went and apologized after, um, it, uh, ca is it Captain Major Bonke talked? I said, you know, we have been getting shot. And it's not because of me, it's because of me. Because my head has always been above when bullets are flying. I'm like, also me, I know. <laughs> I will, and the, the bullets will come at me, pa, and I'll go back and say, hey, Pastor Mike, they have shot me. <laughs> <laughs> But he'll be like, oh, say, I told you. I'm like, eh, but I also had opinions. <laughs> so as, just, as, as even this afternoon, I apologize. I'm like, I'm so sorry, Pastor Mike. Like, for real, I am really sorry. I now accept that you're my father, and I submit wow. to your leadership. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You guys, we're going to have to go home at some point. So uh, there's, there's like... I, some, okay, I know, I know that. Uh, Hi, I have okay. the mic. <laughs> okay. Sorry, today I have to take it by force. Hi, yeah. Daddy. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Mommy. <laughs> My name is Molly Awar Ogola Karanja. As the fat daughter of this house, Come I was on, known Molly. as Pastor Molly, and then I got married, and I'm now Awar Karanja. I, I feel I want to share this and I just pray that as I share it that anybody who is having problems uh, with fatherhood, they'll be able to accept. I've never known Pastor Moridi as a boss. I am in Camp Victor. Pastor M has always been my father. I met Pastor M when they had just come back from the States. As Pastor Kara was saying, we were being anointed together. I was in that service. But unfortunately, I was at your head, and I was not, <laughs> I was like the hair with two things. So I'll go do my dunda, come back home at three, sleep. There was a 12 o'clock service. I think he was the one leading that. Go for the service, confess my sins, go back home. And so I finished, I finished campus, went to the NGO world, because I was doing, you know, sociology. 
um, NGO World was my target, World Bank, UN. Um, so I started local NGO, then PSI. And when I was working for PSI, there was a time I was going to the airport and on Mombasa Road, I got an accident and I gave my life to Christ fully now. And I went to church. Um, and when I was going back to church, this was around 2005, chapel was dividing, um, multiplying <laughs> into different churches. And Pastor Moredi and Carol were in charge of it was called Mombasa Road Church Plant. And through a series of events, uh, my disciple is Jenny Kaneke, she's here. It's a long story, so I'm, I'm trying to summarize it. Uh, I was supposed to work under Pastor Oscar, because Pastor Oscar was the one who was, you know, my father when Pastor Emma and Carol were away. And so she's like, hey, I know you, Molly, I've worked with you. If you go under Pastor Oscar, you'll be gone, gone, gone. Go and serve under Pastor Moravi. And by God's grace, God has had orchestrated for me to be there. We lived in the same estate, that was Sandview. And I decided to be an intern. In fact, Pastor Oscar used, always used to come and say, you have my intern who ran away. Because <laughs> I went to work for Pastor Moravi. And by God's grace, we lived in the same estate and he literally became my first. I remember like, he was like, you have an interview before you come internship. So I had dressed for an interview. And guess what the interview was? <laughs> it was coconut fish at Swahili restaurant. We just had lunch. And then he told me, you're hired. <laughs> I was like, hey, who is this? And uh, another thing that I forget to tell you is, I think a father comes to you as a point of weakness. Because I did the very first foundation class. And what had happened is, remember I had an accident? So when I was going for Mizizi, I literally, I had one hand. Um, and there was always tea, you know, we always have you food. This is the house of harvest, there's always food. And so nobody will help me. So I'm, I have tea, but I can't carry the snacks. And remember, Pastor M will come and help me with either the tea or the snack. And then since we're the last people serving, he'll, he'll you know, will now talk before the class starts. And it went like that. Uh, we finished foundation class and we went for a retreat. Confession. <laughs> I'd already been discipled by Jenny. So when I was doing business, I felt like I was being made to repeat a class. And half of the time, I wasn't there. I'm those people who just passed by foundation class. Little did I know that I was being prepared to take over the mantle of Mizizi. And I remember when we had the first foundation class retreat and Pastor Simon was talking about the Holy Spirit. I was half asleep. <laughs> And then um, at the end of it all, when the anointing came, it came so powerfully on me, I found myself on the floor and crying and all that. Anyway, I joined the internship and I was given the mantle to run with me, Zizi. And remember, we are made strong when we are weak. Pastor M. Fon when I was very weak, so his strength became my first. I just want to say that as a father, Pastor Moredi is my foundation. We did foundation class, which became Mizizi. He's my source, he's my sustainer, and he's my defender. I'm as stubborn as him. <laughs> and I remember in internship, I was that intern, like Osai, me, I have my own opinion. You, who, who do you think you are? And I remember quarreling with my supervisor, and I was the first intern to be expelled. <laughs> Who has ever been expelled from internship? I was. <laughs> so I was expelled, where do you go? So I went to chapel, and I remember Pastor Oscar was talking about being a vessel of honor. And that word honor, I think, stuck with me. And I remember coming back to Pastor M, and as I said, what did God teach you? And the two things he told me is, um, obedience is better than sacrifice. Two, you must always be a vessel of honor. And I remember this word honor started sticking with us when Zimbabwe was going through something. I think Pastor M had been called to an international mission on, on to Zimbabwe. And at that time, Kenyans were feeling we are more righteous than them because, I mean, I think it was, they were down economically. And they came to the country. But the honor they showed Pastor M and everybody else, Pastor M caught that mental of honor and he taught us to honor. And so I was fully submitted to Pastor M as my father. I didn't know how not to work with Pastor M as a father. He'll pick me from home because we lived in the same um, estate. 
will go to work when we are working you know you have to revere your father i will honor him we work lunchtime he'll come hi molly do you have food where i broke church those days we'll go get maize and cassava we come back there's always tea we'll have our tea finish go back to work you know um finish work then we go back home and I remember Sundays, it was always tiring. Sunday, he's like, oh, it's Sunday. Tomorrow is Sabbath. Are you going to your house or coming to mine? I knew his house in Sandview. I knew his house in Embakasi. I had a room. When he was talking about how he had a room with thousands of books, that was my room. I knew his house um, in Kilimani. It was a nice yellow room um, that was just amazing. I spent many time with him. And so like a good father, when I finished, you know, internship, two years pastoral trainee, um, then, what is that? Ministry assistant, I finish, is like, like a good father, I need to take you to school. In this house, then we go to Negast. But I'm like, you went to Divinity. He's like, no, <laughs> Narudi, Kenya, I'm taking you to school. So I went to school 2010 to 2013, got married, and then came back. Unfortunately for me, Pastor M had now become a boss. <laughs> so I came, I met a boss. I had just gotten married, I had my first baby, I was seeing these things, Do we need a thousand Mizizi leaders, we need to do 6,000 Siju who, the church is changing, we are, we are 6,000 in Bellevue, we'll be 12,000 here, and I'm like, <laughs> cheers, can I go take care of my baby? <laughs> I can't. So I told him, let me resign, because I don't see me delivering what you need. Because I know, if I'm not giving you 100%, I have no business sitting here. We are a house of excellence. Remember, uh, I don't know whether we still use the same value. You are relevant, we are excellent, we are authentic, we are passionate about what you're doing. And I was feeling, I don't have that right now. Let me go and take care of my family. So I went home, took care of my family, and then my no half life happened. Me, I was home taking care of my family. And then in 2016, I got a clarion call from Pastor Caro, and she said, we need you back. And when your father calls you back, you come back. <laughs> What? I wish I had stayed home as a stay-at-home mom. I came back and the system had totally changed. Um, let me just say 2013 to 2018 were the worst year of my life at Mavuno Church. I didn't get the system. It was harsh. It was full of conflict. It, it was just hard for me. And then I went home and I just said, God has been gracious to me because every time he sends me home, he gives me a baby, so I forget other things I just concentrate on my children and so I stayed home I was you know in pain and in tears the Bible talks about how in the story of Joseph that when the years of leanness come you can't even remember what plenty looked like I had been so estranged from Pastor M I used to see him on TV and I used to wonder who the hell is this sorry sorry excuse my language who is this I didn't get him Anyway, I stayed home. Two verses that ministered to me, but I didn't know is uh, teach a child in the way that they should go, and when they are old, they won't depart. Pastor M was my teacher. He taught me honor. He taught me excellence. He taught me giving it your all, being resilient, staying the course. And when you do something, Pastor M used to say, we are, I remember like one boy was coming from doing her PhD, and he was like, in this home, because I was adapted into the Wanjao household, and that person who knows Pastor Ed's everything. Pastor Carol's family, the whole of it, Pastor Ed's family, the whole of it, I know. It was even so ironic for me that I'm married in Moranga, and Pastor Carol's family is from Moranga. So I think the DNA of fatherhood with Pastor Ed is on me. So what I want to say is, I don't know whether as I'm sharing, you are trying to understand who Pastor Ed is a father. He's that father who will defend you when you're weak. He will sustain you when you have no energy to go on. He'll always be your source. As he's saying, my, the graces that are in me, I'm giving to you. So I just want to say, um, it was painful. I have just come back to Mabuno Church. Yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> I left in December 2018. I've never been back. I went, and I live here, Graceland. <laughs> I've never stepped, every time I've stepped into this church, I felt so oppressed. But I think God opened the way for me when the fatherhood anointing came back. 
because I didn't, I didn't know what Mavuna went through from 2018 till now. I was gone. I, I didn't want to know. But what you had taught me about honor, and I said, the way I left Mavuna Church in 2018, I cannot do that. I have to come back and finish well so that I can be released. Because your father has to tell you, this is my beloved child whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him or hear he her. Before he speaks those to me, my, my heavens cannot be open. And I think one of the greatest thing I took from sonship is God himself values sonship so much that he had to come down and be a son to show us what it means to be a son. And so I pray that for anybody who is struggling with what it means to be a child, it has nothing but honor and wealth and all the anointings that it means to excel. When Pastor Moravi was my father between 2005 and 2013, everything I touched turned to gold because I had his blessing. He always called me, you're my first daughter, you have my, uh, my double portion anointing. He defended me, he was my source, he was my sustainer, he was always there for me, he lay hands for me. When I'm tired, he'll tell me keep going. Every project he gave me, be it Mizizi, be it changing you know, PMCC in Tundoa, Lea, all the things, the whole system I went through, everything I touched turned to gold. But when I came back and I couldn't recognize him as a father, it changed for me. Like Joseph, I think it just became the dark night of the soul. And so I pray that as, you know, this idea of fatherhood, officially I'm 18 years in Mavuno this year. <laughs> Started in 2005. So I know 18 is a significant number. I don't know where God is taking me. But if there's anything I need to tell you guys, embrace it. Take it, run with it. As Pastor Milton has said, take his heart. What is in your mind? What is your intent? Meaning, what are you even thinking? As David says, he's a person under my, after my own heart. It means even your precepts, teach me your precepts. Precepts are ideas. If you can even grasp what idea he has, run with it. If it's still an idea, you know, like I'm seeing how he's saying fellowship and he's like, I don't even know what to name it. If the revelation comes to you, tell him. Because he's telling you his intent. Help, help him, um, you know, give body and form to those things. Because of who he put to me, people don't recognize me, but the Lord told me what I am in this church. I'm a foundation. People do not see foundation. In one of his book, when he's starting uh, financial fitness, he says, for you to have a huge house, you need to have a deep foundation. And right now, I'm healed. I came. I got the first hug officially. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I cried. We cried. We cried together. We are healed. We are good. The foundation of this house is deep. And the foundation is fatherhood. So take it. You may not know who we are. You may not see us. But take it. Because you have a deep foundation in this church, where you're going to go, it's the heavens. So thank you, Pastor Morelli. Wow. Thank you for being the foundation, the thank source, the sustainer, the defender of this church. And wow. may everybody, everybody in this house know you. And when you feel hurt, you don't know what to do with your father, run to your mommy. I thank God I have mommy because all that time when I was having issues with my father, Pastor Carol was always there for me. So thank you, mommy and daddy. Thank you for making me who I am. I've come to finish well with honor because honor is a foundation stone of this house. May you be truly blessed and may your children be many. May the tents of Mavunu Church be extended Amen. to what God has called us Amen. to be. Amen. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. You know, it's so interesting because, thank you, Pastor Molly, and thank you for that. Um, at the beginning of this, of was it the first day when Pastor Kilonzi talked about sonship and sons coming back home? Uh, since then, I've had maybe five, six, seven people who've come. And he, get this, they were not invited. I don't, I don't know how Pastor Molly ended up in Mavuno when, the day we were talking sonship. Pastor, you just happened to be passing. Like, I don't know. I don't know how Pastor, I mean, it's, it's amazing. That God is actually the one bringing back sons. Um, Pastor Yasa, I mean, you just happened to be around. And your home, this is your home. You're loved here. You will thrive here. You will prosper here. Your marriage will thrive here. This is home. This is home. You're not a prodigal. This is your home. And I'm grateful for all those who are coming back home. 
And there are many others, by the way. There are many others who God is bringing. And Pastor Molly, I love you. I always have. Yeah, that will never change. Uh, that will never change. And let me just say this, guys. Basically, what happens in the Christian world, in the spiritual world, it's the same as a family. You know, we are getting to the place where we are growing. And when you grow, there are birth pains. I mean, if you want to understand the, what the genesis of what Pastor Molly is talking about, read my book, Fearless. Because I talk about those pains. And it wasn't just her who went through pain. Many of us went through pain because the family was expanding and we didn't know how to stay a small family. And it's interesting because you say, yeah, I'm jealous of the team around. But you see, the thing is, if your grandfather is the one with a good family and your parents don't have good families, that's a problem. Because it means all the children, great grandkids, they'll be saying, my grandfather's family was the best one. The next great, my great grandfather's family was the best one. That's a failure. If I cannot pass the grace that is on me upon my sons and daughters, so they pass them on to their sons and daughters, I'm a failure as a father. If we cannot experience the love of God and you only watch it on family night on the screen, then we failed. Because for us, our desire is everything you're watching is happening. By the way, if all of you have fridge rights in my house, I might have to buy like 10, actually even 10 fridges won't fit you. My whole house will become a fridge. So it can't, <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> Only Papa Kilo thinks like that. I don't know how he's, what's in his mind. He thinks too fast. But you know, it's interesting because that's not God's intention. Even Jesus could not be the fridge for the 72 and the 120 and the 5,000. He had to say, look, I'm going to have to build my 12 who will be rocks for these ones and who will be rocks for the next ones. And that's just how it works. And that's why we are so keen on this conversation, guys because we can't leave anyone behind. Uh, we can't leave anyone behind. And for those of you who are saying, I need to feel the love, then my encouragement is call out your father. Talk to your DG leader and say, our DG needs to be more loving. We need to support, and I'm here to support. By the way, don't call us in, we should be, or you should be. Say, here I am. If you want this group, if you need someone to be the fun um, supplier, the plot maker, the person who makes sure we visit each other. I'm even willing to organize. I'll work with somebody and help you. So that we actually contribute to making this the family God is calling us to be. Uh, so it's not a fake thing that we're seeing on a screen, but it's actually real for all of us. And that's the only way we'll be a family. That's why this conversation looped back from the army. I've pushed into the army, but I'm like, no, no, let's just loop back a bit because I don't want us to forget the foundation of this army. It's the family. It's the family. And so thank you guys. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you guys for being real. Yeah? <laughs> thank you. I mean, honestly, as they were speaking, there's nothing, I, I, like, I didn't know the, what they'd say. It was just like all of the stories you've shared have been so real. Even my, up to my wife, like I was learning something. In fact, she hinted. You had those ones of, we need to talk. Any husband in the house already knows how I'm feeling right now. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, why is it husbands always panic when somebody says we need to talk? It's such a scary thing. I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, yeah. But we are a family. We love each other. So it's, it's what it means. What? 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 Ah, yeah. We are strong. 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 Yeah, we're going to make it. We love each other. And we love each other as different as we are. Single people. Widows. Divorced. Couples people who are struggling in their marriage, people who have solid and, and amazing marriages. We're a family, just like every family. No family is perfect. Every family has its quirks and its issues, but we're a family. We're a family. And so I want us to just um, take a moment, do a couple of family things um, as we conclude. The first is, I just want to pray for, yeah. <sighs> someone who's still really struggling with this concept it's like I'm really struggling I've heard it it's made sense I just need Jesus to do a work now I mean it's not it's not logic I need I just need God to do a work in me and I'd like to pray for you just stand up where you are I just want to pray that Jesus himself would reveal yeah he'd reveal it if it's from him that he would reveal it to you come on let's just appreciate I love I love Mabuno. I love that people are real in this church I love that we don't have to pretend. You know, we don't have to say, Pastor has said, so we do. I think it's important 
that we're able to say, hey, I'm struggling. Pastor Milton has told me this, but I'm struggling. Pastor Kevin told me I should, but I'm struggling. And sometimes it's not Pastor Milton, but it's me. <laughs> sometimes it's things I've carried into this, but I'm struggling. And you know what? We don't even need to know why, is it, why it is. I think it's just important for us to understand that our Father is here. If it is His will that we should be a family, He's able to give us love for one another, isn't He? He's able to do this. So I'm going to ask uh, those who are sitting next to them, just stretch out a hand towards them and just pray that God would reveal Himself. Just pray that God would just remove any barriers to revelation, remove any barriers, any pain of the past, any struggles that might even be intellectual, just be able to speak to them if it's intellectually. <laughs> just do what he needs to do in his own gentle way as a father, to reveal himself as a father, but also to help them understand the family around them as their family. To find the father that God has placed in their heart, in, in their life spiritually, would become a father, a real father for them. Thank you, Lord. Just come on, just speak a word. Speak a word. These are, these are your brothers and sisters. Pray that they will not be left behind. Pray that the enemy would not cut in on their race. Pray that they would not be swept away. Pray that the pain would be wiped away, whatever it is. That the Lord will be able to do it. This is the God we, we serve. He's able to do it. He's able to do it. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Father God, I just sense that there are some people here who just, because of a background, a father who was aloof, a father who was harsh, that this is just a hard, hard conversation. It's so abstract because they just don't know how. They would like to, but they don't know how. But Lord, if you really are God, you're able to do this. And I invoke you, Heavenly Father, their Father, to speak to them. Father, we ask even today, in the course of this day, that you would change something. You would shift something. But Lord, in the next 24 hours, something would shift. I'm asking you, Lord, that something would shift. Not something that they can conjure up, not even an intellectual thing. Something would shift in the realm of the Spirit for these ones. Lord, we've had many stories of people who said at some point something shifted. And I'm praying that something will shift. And that Lord, these ones would give testimony. They would share testimony and say something shifted. We prayed as a community. We agreed together. And God did it. In His mercy, God did it. And so I just want to pray for these, these loved ones, these ones you love so much, these children that you've given to this home, these ones who are your sons and daughters that you've entrusted this family with. We pray for them, Lord. Embrace them with your love right now. Embrace them with your presence right now. Wipe away the pain the confusion, whatever it is, just wipe it away right now. I'm praying, Lord, in Jesus' name, just begin to do a work right now in the Spirit. I'm declaring over you that the Lord is beginning to work. Just, just open your heart to Him. Father, just begin to do something right now for these who are standing. Just do something. Move. Move, Lord. Move with the Spirit of joy. Lord, just remove, remove the tears, the pain of the past. Just wipe it away right now. Lord Jesus, what would have taken them years of therapy for some of them? Just remove right now in Jesus' name. Just reconnect them, Lord. You say it in the book of Malachi that your passion, your desire is to connect the sons, the hearts of the sons to their fathers and the hearts of their fathers to their sons. And that that is how the curse is lifted. I'm praying, Father God, right now, just begin the work of stitching back, reconnecting hearts, reconnecting people, starting with Heavenly Father, that Lord Jesus, they'll be able to say those words, my heavenly father, my daddy. And then Lord, start connecting with the, the spiritual parents, the spiritual mothers and fathers that you've put in their life. And Lord, I'm praying for everyone here that nobody is going to leave this place the same. Uh, nobody's going to leave this place the same. Father God, instead of tears, you're going to replace it with joy. Ah, uh, Lord, that morning is going to be replaced with gladness. The oil of gladness is going to be in their houses. Ah, Father God, I am declaring joy is their portion in Jesus' name. Ah, Lord, release a spirit of joy in the house right now, Lord. I speak joy. I speak the joy of the Lord upon your children right now. Right now, Lord, you're, you're lifting away a heavy burden in someone's heart. You're removing a heavy burden. 
Uh, Father God, for that person whose even their intellect has been a block to their receiving you, to their connecting with you. Lord, you're, you're bypassing it right now. Uh, Lord, I sense it right now. I sense it. You're replacing it. Come on, just receive it. Just receive it. Don't resist it. Just receive it. Your Father is the one who's moving you right now to feel how you're feeling. Some of you right now, there's a great sadness that you're feeling. It's just such a heaviness, a heavy sadness. And it's just something that the Lord is revealing to you so He can lift it. So don't resist it. Just, just say, yeah, Lord, I give you this sadness. I give you this sense of desolation. I give you this sense of lostness right now, of this aloneness. I give it to you right now. I surrender it to you. And Father God, as your children surrender it, I speak joy. I speak joy. I speak joy. I speak the comfort of the Holy Spirit. I speak the grace of God upon you. Your Father is so gracious with you. Your Father is so gracious with you. He loves you. He's patient with you. He will not force His will on you because He loves you. He loves you. Ah, Father God, open their eyes to see the goodness of God. Open their eyes. This thing that has blocked them will no longer block them. Father God, I declare marriages are going to be changed in this house in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. As this thing is rolled away, even relationships between husbands and wife are going to be different. Relationship between sons and daughters and their, their biological parents are going to be different going forward. Some reconciliation is happening. Something is being sealed in the spirit right now that is going to manifest in the, spiritual, in the physical realm. And we bless you, Lord. And so may the Lord just give you so much grace right now. May you just experience His grace. Just, there's, a, there's just a moment right now when I sense that the Lord is putting His arms around you. He is. And Lord, I pray for your children. Let them experience it. Let them experience it. What your biological father, your earthly father could not give you, your father is in the house to provide. He's in the house to supply. You're not an orphan. You will never be an orphan. God is not in the business of orphanhood. Yeah, He's not in the business of orphanhood. He's in the business of fatherhood. You will never be an orphan. That's not your destiny in Christ Jesus. And the Lord is raising fathers and mothers for you. In the spiritual realm and even physically, He's doing it. And so, Father, I thank you right now. Just in this holy moment, I thank you. I thank you that you're doing it. Lord, we're not asking you a difficult thing. This is a small thing for you to do. And so I'm praying, just come and do it. Come and do it. I release your sons and daughters to you now. And I say, Lord, it is done. It is done. It is done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yeah, they're going to be testimonies. I, 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 there are going to be testimonies because our Father is faithful. He really is. I also want us to do a family moment. Um, and this is, this is family. We cry and we laugh together. And um, yeah, one of the fathers of this house um, recently, has recently, was it yesterday or today? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, he became a year older, Pastor James. <laughs> come on, Pastor James. Come, 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 Pastor James. Wow. So our DG just wants to share this song. Uh, this, we, we, we just thought, yeah, you're a man worthy of honor. So we want to sing for you at the church and just say happy birthday. We're glad you are born. Yeah, yeah, man, we'd be so much poorer if you're not born. Like so many people's lives here would be so poor if you're not born. Like if you aren't born, you don't have met Pastor Dorcas. Like first of all, for her sake, I'm glad you're born. <laughs> but leave alone even her, even the rest of us, you've enriched our lives so greatly. You've enriched my life uh, extremely. You really have. And I'm grateful you're born. I'm really grateful you're born. And so we want to just say happy birthday, Pastor James. Uh, oh, yeah. If Pastor James's family is here, can they come up? And his his wife, his children, if there is, is okay, she's not here. But 
Oh, come on, come on, let's appreciate them. Oh, come on. <laughs> Just come, 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 run, 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 run. Don't you like cake? I, I thought you would. Yeah. In fact, I'm surprised. Yeah, where is Jabali? He's not here. He's learning piano. Oh, he's learning piano. Okay. Somebody has replaced him. Praise God. This cake has never lacked people to, to volunteer. So we just want to sing for our pastor. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, he, he has served this church. This man, if there's one pastor who has a, a, a gift of intercession, it's this man. If there's a man who prays for us, it is this man. I mean, even for this gathering, I mean, there are times you come here early at five in the morning. I mean, the first day I came at five, he, he was kneeling on the, he had even gotten lost. I think he was even under the altar. Just praying for this gathering at five in the morning before anybody came in. He just has such a spirit of prayer. And he's one of the rocks that I believe that the Lord has used to sustain us in this time. And the people of Hill City Network, you are blessed. You are so, so blessed. You are so blessed to have, to have a, a, a parent in the Lord like this man and Pastor Dorcas. You truly are blessed. And we're grateful uh, that we get to share your pastor today that we get to sing for him today. So let me just invite us all to stand, and uh, his brothers and sisters can come a bit closer. We want to sing, and then as we sing, Papa Demo is going to, when he finishes fatherly duties, uh, he's going to hold the knife with his children, so all of you get a chance to hold with your daddy the knife. And then one of my children who's a singer, where are they? They've all run away. They're here. They're there. Oh, ah. There they are. Hiya. Twende Kazi. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pastor James. Happy birthday to you. And how old are you now? Five. How old <laughs> You now Five. Happy <laughs> birthday Dear <laughs> Pastor James Happy birthday <laughs> To you Happy, Happy birthday Dear Pastor James Dear Pastor James Happy birthday Dear Pastor James Happy birthday Dear Pastor James Dear Pastor James Happy Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pastor James. May your wallet always have some cash. Always have something. May your wallet always have some cash. May your pesa always have money. May your pesa always have money. Happy Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Pastor James. Cut a cake to cool a sasa, to cool a sasa, cut a cake to cool a sasa, cut a cake to cool a sasa, cut a cake to cool a sasa. Love you, Pastor James. Come on. <laughs> you notice what he did? He got he got all the children to make sure he, they gave him a piece of cake. How kind of him! Uh, <laughs> wow. He's. A, we are so grateful for you, Pastor James. We thank God. Can we just stretch out our hands towards our pastor, Father? We thank you that you have told us to pray for our leaders. When it goes well for them, it goes well for us. We thank you for the privilege of this great man, this great leader that you've raised up. Lord Jesus, not great because he does things, but great because you have said of him, this is my son whom I love, in whom I'm well pleased. We thank you that you've specifically gifted him for this church. Lord, you've put the, pack, you've put the package together that Lord would allow him to lead us in this. He's the man for the season. And so right now we just ask every spiritual blessing upon him. Our Father God, I pray that you would not deny anything to him that he needs. We pray that, Lord, you would take him to the next level of spiritual authority. 
so that, Lord, he would be able to lead your people as he should. We pray that you would give him the wisdom, like Solomon, to lead a great people because the people of Hill City Network are great people. And we pray that, Lord, you'd give him the wisdom to lead them and even to lead this movement. And so, Father, we just ask that you would bestow upon him every blessing that he requires. Our Father, I know that in many ways, the enemy is smart enough to know that if he strikes the shepherd, he scatters the sheep. We declare over this shepherd that there will be no striking, not against him, that no weapon fashioned against them will prosper. That, Father God, every word that is spoken against them shall be stilled and kept quiet that every attack against them in one direction will flee in seven directions. And Lord, we ask that there will be a hedge of protection and fire around this pastor, his family, his congregation, and those dear to them. And that, Father, they would prosper. That 2023 would be the best year of his life so far and the beginning of many to come. We pray for Pastor Dorcas as well. Lord, may your blessing be upon their marriage. May you bless them in every way. May you answer the prayers of their heart. May you make all their plans succeed. And so, Father, we thank you for the privilege of just honoring and blessing our pastor. And we pray these things in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And God's people say it together. Amen. Amen. Come on, Pastor James. We love you. He's in Pesa number. Uh-huh. I'm Jerry Capo. Some, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Come on, Pastor James. Yeah, he's a great man. Wow, hey, we're going to adjourn, I know, because tomorrow is a full day, so we need to get all our strength and energy up for it. Uh, tomorrow is, is going to be the final day, we're going to have a time of prayer and impartation as we always do. Uh, our day starts at 6, uh, so all the people in your DG who are not here, let them come in. Uh, it's going to be our grand finale and our preparation, our launch into 2023. And so for those of you who are watching, if you're able to come in tomorrow physically, fantastic. If you're in another country where there's a watch party, uh, figure out where that is, uh, find out and join them. Uh, and let's just be in, co in company tomorrow. I really am believing God is going to do something. I have faith that he's going to do something. And that it's going to be one of those where I'm like, I was glad I was there. And so come on, if you could just hold hands with the people across the aisle. Um, and let's just... Let's just do this thing and say the blessing. There's a blessing that's in Scripture that is called the grace. And many times we close our eyes when we are saying it. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm like, why are you closing your eyes? This is a blessing. Blessings, you don't close your eyes. You say them with your eyes open because you're saying them to your neighbor. And so we're going to say the grace. And when he, say, when he comes, be with us all, you say, be with you now forevermore. Are you ready? So don't be shy. This is your, imagine this is your spiritual brother. This is your sister. Uh, this is your mother, this is your son. Uh, say the blessing like you mean it. Come on, somebody. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, and now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Be with you now and forevermore. And God's people say it. Yeah. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, just... 30 more seconds before you leave, uh, I cannot not give my mommy and daddy some cake. <laughs> and my babies have insisted they want to help me, so come and help me. We oh give my goodness. Pastor M and Pastor Carol some cake. The smallest piece. I want to keep my, I want to keep my January body. <laughs> yeah, so they can share a fork, Cindy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We share many other things. I 